Well, welcome everyone. Our paint job turned out great. And today we are going to put our new tires on. We're also going to put our cedar boards on and get this trailer finished up. I hope you guys enjoy the video. This has been a fun project. And now that it's nearing completion, it's going to look really good behind the mule. I had to take this down into the pole party last night and let it dry. We painted it yesterday. You guys have probably already seen that video. But some of this paint is still tacky. Try not to scratch anything up if we don't have to. Still going to have to paint the hubs when we get these wheels off. And I think I'm just going to do that with a small brush again. That way we can go ahead and install our new wheels and not get paint all over them. It's been a few years since these wheels have been off here. off and go ahead and paint these hubs up. Bearing's still good. Sound good too. Yeah, that's going to look fine on there. And definitely taller than ground clearance as well. We're stepping up about four inches there. with this just in case these new ones don't fit. I don't want to be without a trailer until I find the right ones. Been a few years since this has been off here too. Still has plenty of grease in it. But what these bearing savers allow us to do it has a greaser right there. We can pump grease into the bearing and shouldn't give you any more trouble. Plus a little bit of chrome makes things look nice. And that is the right size. Sure, it seals all the way up. And a block of wood would work just as well, but a rubber mallet. We don't want to scratch our chrome up before we get started.
I'm going to go ahead and add some grease to our bearing saver here. And I'm going to go until I see the spring start to come out. These things right here will save a lot of time. Specifically if you're hauling out on the highway, you don't have to worry about a bearing giving up on you. Now the spring inside there will push that grease as it heats up due to movement and actually catch the inner bearing on this side as well. Alright, both wheels are on now. And I don't know about you guys, but a nice set of wheels can make anything look good. <laughs> Alright, to hold this thing together guys, and I'm going wood to wood here, I'm going to use the number 10 by 2.5 inch long screws that is made for exterior use. Then when we go into the metal, we're going to go to the two and three quarter self-drilling screws. And the only bit I could get these in was Phillips. Okay, I'm going to pre-drill through the first board here because I don't want the screw trying to pull tight into it until we get into our uh, lateral board. And then it should go ahead and set into it. So let's get these pre-drilled and we'll get our side drill set and then we'll be ready for some flooring. Now to pilot the holes, I'm using a uh, drill bit that's two times smaller than the wood screw there. Hopefully by pre-drilling these, we don't have to worry quite as much about this stuff trying to split out on us. I like the fact that these screws have a larger diameter head on them in order to hold them to this raw wood. I'm assuming that this is going to shrink a little bit. Now because this is live edge, I'm keeping my bottom flush on our channel down here and just letting the top do what it needs to do. Okay, I've laid everything out in here. We've got floorboards in now. We actually made it square back here. And what I did, I know this front rail was square. So I laid everything in and then marked the back off with the level as you've seen it there. That gave me a really nice square line. I'm going to drill these screws in, get this thing fastened in tight, and we're almost done. And again, I am pre-drilling, and I've made a square line across here with a straight edge. 
I'm spacing everything two and a half inches off the edge. So we keep us a nice straight line. Now these screws, because they are machine thread, and again self-drilling, once they start in there, I don't have to over tighten, but they do a good job of pulling this material down. This is the same style of screw I used when we uh, built this trailer the first time. And you guys seen me take that apart in the previous video. into the wood. These lights are just right in here. That's actually hard to see. Now these self-drilling screws are more than capable of drilling straight on through there. But again, I, I don't want to over tighten the wood to the metal. So that little pilot hole does help. This is the last one, guys. Well, if you've been following along with the series of rebuilding this trailer, I hope you've enjoyed it. All chainsaw mill material, and we did get to keep our live edge. And we most certainly look different than what we started. I'll try to leave a picture of what this thing looked like two, three days ago now.
That is a tight fit to put the mule on the opposite side of the garage here. There's only one thing left. We gotta see how it looks on the mule. Doesn't that look nice? Well, it definitely suits the mule. So we were 14 hours for a total project build, and that included tearing the old trailer down, uh, cutting the cedar tree down, milling it up. We're at about $260 as far as tires, bearing savers, paint, things like that. And we pretty much have a new trailer now. I will have the videos posted for you, hopefully in sequence. But if you have a trailer that you want to rebuild, um, I'm going to say the Cedar looks real nice on this. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the series. I'll talk to you on the next one.